to the power of God, I, I don't know, but there are people God is raising to become mighty vessels. I just saw an anointing rest on you, this role. In the name of Jesus, I don't know where you are, but I pray may that grace now, let it rest upon you and shift you to a new dimension. In the name of Jesus Christ. Welcome to Christocentric Message. On this channel, you are going to get soul-lifting messages, faith-based content, prayer drills, and videos that would help you grow spiritually. Remember to subscribe to the channel, like the video you are about to watch, and comment on it. Stay blessed. Apostle, I don't know why I have favor, but people run away from me. You are right. You have been wasting that grace because you have not studied about relationships. The grace comes upon you, but your ignorance as to know how to relate with the world of men keeps aborting and destroying that grace. The day you submit yourself to learning how to live in the world of men, you take advantage of that grace. Now you are ready to excel. Now you are ready to excel. A gentleman years ago who soon pray he heard my teaching I did a teaching on finances and when he listened to it he had a little fashion outfits just to sew and when he listened he was full of incompetence and was just giving all kinds of excuses he will measure you and sew clothes that twice your neck will enter inside it, carelessness and it didn't matter to him and when he listened, and in, in it I spoke about diligence, he made up his mind. He submitted himself for one year to learning and mastery. Receiving the blessings that came from God's servant week in, week out. At the end of it, listen very carefully. At the end of it, that gentleman grew to a level of competence. He now, his goal and his prayer was that one day he would also include me among his clients that he would be sowing for and he believed that he was called to do it but not that version of him and he worked on himself for one year and he sowed something then in Zaria he carried it and brought it many people used to sow and bring clothes as seeds and for some reason I was restless early in the morning I said let me check out what this guy did I'm, so I said, I'm sure all these people who have sown a lot of things God bless them but I may not be able to use it but when I saw his finishing I saw what he did I asked the protocol I said look for this guy let him see me before he leaves <laughs> ladies and gentlemen that was the beginning of open doors for that gentleman the rest is history history that is worth knowing but it is history Oh, David, it is true that one day you will kill Goliath. But if all you do is sit down in the bush staring at animals, Goliath will kill you as if God did not call you. Are we together? Yes, sir. When David was killing the bear, when David was killing the lion, the grace for leadership was supervising him, watching him. And when the moment came, he came and stood before Goliath and he said, I've rehearsed well. Goliath said, am I a dog? He said, Goliath, be careful. You don't know what I've been doing preparing for this day. I am what I am by the grace of God. But the grace, I did not waste it in that I labored. I labored. In prayer, I labored in diligence. Nigerians, let's return to a point where we find dignity in labor and let's see it as part of faith as an as a participatory role to obtain and maximize grace arbitrarily leaving things to just walk like that arbitrarily waiting that one day we'll become exceptional politicians with no effort on our part exceptional businessmen doing business with nations exceptional men of God mentoring kings and speaking to nations just because God called you I apologize but that may never happen this is not how the kingdom works 
Therefore, you must obtain grace tonight to go back and say, Lord, what have you told me? And what participatory role do I have to play in diligence? While you are crying, you still believe I'm a carrier of that grace and it's working for me. God has called you into the music ministry. Sit down and pray in tongues until songs start coming from heaven. When they come, write them. You are maximizing grace. The first song, you will sing it and like it alone. Don't be discouraged. Keep writing. Are we together? You believe God has called you into business. You will go full of grace and be surprised that you will fail woefully. Don't worry. There is a difference between failure as a person and failure as an event. Give God glory for the lesson you are learning now because it will give you the audacity to mentor others tomorrow. So continue learning and going. And whilst you take that step from one connection to another connection, to one sermon, to one program, to one destiny helper, to one revelation, to one impartation, you find out that your life now begins to make sense. Something is adding up. Something is adding up. I desired certain levels of the anointing in my life. I saw in dreams and visions that I was walking in it. It would be a joke those days to just gather people and say, I wanted people for, on wheelchairs and crutches. Ah, no. But I knew. And I said, just sitting down to say, God, one day you will bless me. Uh -uh. I started looking for healing evangelists around the world, dead and alive. I began to study their convictions and their contemplations. What did God tell them? And let me tell you this. By the privilege of God's grace, we who God has helped to be successful a bit and we are still growing in the area of success, let's be sincere when we mentor people. Don't just arbitrarily tell them is the grace of God like that. When it has to do with mentorship, open them to your scars. Let them know the dynamics, the way you participated with that grace to make it happen. Tell them you prayed for 10 hours. Not as an effort on your own, but that you were taking advantage of the grace. Tell them you fasted. Tell them there were times you were disappointed in meetings. Be open with them. Tell them you forgot your message one day. And that was when you knew that the spirit of revelation was real. Be sincere with them. For as long as we keep blaming people for our lives, including God, God, you are there. You are watching my life. You are watching my family. God is saying my love and my kindness is not in doubt. I have given you everything. He that did not spare his son. I didn't spare Jesus. Will I withhold anything from you? You are aborting, misusing, and abusing the grace of God. I keep enabling you and you do not act in keeping with the conditions that are required by scripture to make that grace come to pass. So from tonight, make up your mind that my life must command results. Make up your mind. It is not all on to, up to God and it is not all up to you. Let me round up by saying this and then we pray. When the prodigal son left his father and went around, he was roaming around with pigs, eating from pigs. Here's what he said. I will arise what did he want he wanted to enjoy that grace again that opportunity it was a house with limitless abundance but he left it and he began to deplete he said I will arise I don't have the power to restore myself but I have the power to meet my father I can make efforts to meet my father and as he was making that decision concurrently his father said, let me meet my son. Let me keep going. Paradventure, I will meet my son somewhere. There was a meeting point. He did not meet him at his place of rest. And he did not meet him in the house. He met him at the place of obedience. It's a risk I'm taking. What if my father throws me away? It's a risk I'm taking. 
And while I'm going, I'm rehearsing what I will tell him. Father, I have sinned against you and against heaven. I am not worthy to be called your son. Take me as one of the slaves, but at least let me make the efforts. I am going. If he drives me away, I will return back with honor. I will say, God, at least you've seen that I've made efforts. When the father saw him, the first thing the father did was to embrace him and said, your obedience has spoken volumes. You don't need to tell me more. I already know the story. The fact that you understood and discerned enough to leave that point, not minding the shame, people look at him and say, this guy whose father was wealthy, what a useless boy, enduring the ridicule to keep moving was already enough. And um, the moment the father met him, the Bible says he put back that ring, that symbol of honor, sent him to the house, held a party for him. And while that was happening, the elder brother was now angry. And the elder brother said, so what about me? I have been in this house. And he said, you want to make the mistake of this person now? Everything I have is yours. It's just that you don't know what to do. All you needed to do was to ask me as your father. You do not have the consciousness of my fatherhood to request that I will give you a lamb. Will I not honor you for your obedience and your staying? There is nothing that God cannot do but fold in your arms to say, Lord, I know. There is nothing you can not do is true but i'm showing you the dynamics of the administration of grace let's read that scripture again first corinthians 15 10 we're wrapping up 15 10 first corinthians 15 10 please help us media but by the grace of God, Joshua Selman, you are what you are. Everything you will ever be is a product of God's grace. You are right, but don't stop there. Paul did not stop there. He says, and his grace, which was given to me, already given, was not in vain. I participated with that grace in that I labored more abundantly than they all. Yet not I, but the grace of God which was in me. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship, the communion of the Holy Spirit. It will only be with you if you are interested. It will only remain with you if you are ready to receive it. Anything God says you should receive, you can reject it. It does not end up in just confession. It does not end up in waiting for God to do. You have engraced me. Empower me, therefore, to take not steps that I want, steps that are required as demanded by the result I intend to see. Please rise up on your side. Your grace, your grace, I'm nothing without you. Your grace, your grace shines on me. Shines on me, shines on me. I'm everything with you. Shines on me shines on me it's your grace listen whilst you're standing i want you to begin to see with the eyes of your spirit the next level of your christian experience the next level of your business the next level of your family the next level of your finances see it because in christ is a possibility see it because in christ you have access your assignment is to turn access into experience your assignment is to partner with the grace of god through the ministry of the holy spirit to make access 
become experience. You may have a billion dollars in your card, but if you do not know how to, re to use your ATM card or make withdrawals, you can sit down and be dying of hunger and thirst, whereas you have so much. This is how it is in the kingdom. I want you to see with the eyes of your spirit. You are in ministry. I would like you to see how limitless you can be in Christ. Not for the sake of gratifying the flesh. That you can do so much for his majesty. You are in business. You are a politician. I like you to see yourself becoming what God has said. There is no limit, I'm telling you, to what you can be. I believe God, I believe you, I believe you, I believe you. The abundance of your grace. Hallelujah. 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 This is my philosophy. I walk with the consciousness that there is space for me in destiny. There is no devil in existence from any nation and any region that will edge you out of your space in destiny but just knowing it is there does not take you there it was sir isaac newton that stated his laws of motion in his study on mechanics and he stated one of the laws he said, everybody remains in a state of uniform motion or rest. It will remain there except compelled by an external force to act otherwise. He was so right. He was so right. Nothing changes if action and effort is not put. Your business will remain at the last level of your obedience. Your company will remain at the last level of your diligence. Your mind will remain at the last level of your study. The anointing upon your life will remain at the last level of your press and sacrifice. Your prayer life will remain at the last level of your exercising your senses spiritually. Please hear me. Even if you are Esther, while you wait for Ahasuerus, use the oil. Don't sit back there. Esther was not sitting. Every day the oil was coming upon her. You may not have the money to start the company, but go online and buy the books. Listen to teachings by people with results, provable results. You are trusting God for ministry ministry is grounded for you it is not growing you are a sincere person but nobody is placing a demand on the grace of god upon your life stop giving flimsy excuses around it is not tribe it is not region it's not where your church is located no where the carcasses are there the eagles will gather stop giving excuses it's because i am this that's why i'm not promoted i'm lifted in office Take responsibility. Lord, there is something I have not done with the grace you gave me. Remember the wife of the son of the prophets. That oil has been in your house for a long time. The oil kept speaking since last year. Will you leave me like this? Businessman, do you know what I can do? Do you know what the grace of God can do? Man of God, do you know what the grace of God can do? Prophet, apostle, do you know what the grace of God can do? The injection contains in it a liquid that goes into your system and corrects what is wrong. But the injection will not bring itself into your system. The doctor calls you. Designed in that liquid is the entire, the, the injection has already been programmed to work in your body. But are you willing to endure the pain? There are injections that are painful and yet that's the price for the healing you are looking for. So you compare the one minute pain to the years of misery and you can stand and say, doctor, I am willing. 
and he gives you the pain. You may feel the pain, but you are not conscious of that injection. You are conscious of what happens to you. And as soon as it is administered, two days, three days, you're running around like you were never sick. Or you can refuse and remain there and say, I want drugs. But the drugs are given to you. You will have to go through the discipline of swallowing it per time required. And whilst you are swallowing it, complaining, but you are still active. The body does not care that you are complaining. Just keep doing what brings health and the body will be healthy. Can I tell you this? Brothers and sisters, I do not promise you the grace of God and faith in God does not necessarily make all things easy. It makes them possible. I'm not going to promise you that just because the grace of God is upon your life, you may not need to cry. I'll be lying to you. There are some of you, the journey you are beginning from tonight, it will be a journey of tears. But while you cry, don't stop. While you weep, don't stop. Was it not because they wanted to go to the other side? Help them please, we're praying. Just help those under the anointing. It says, where we meet with you is too small. Let us go beyond the Jordan. It was their instinct for increase that brought that guy in trouble. I innocently wanted to fell a tree to build a bigger place. Alas, master, it was borrowed. He said, fine rest. There is a grace for restoration. But you have an effort. Point to me where it fell. I'm not just going to bring it out. Just point it. And he said, well, I may not have the power to make it float. But prophet, I can show you where it is. And he threw a stick and he began to float. Are you ready to pray? In one minute, I'd like you to pray from the depth of your heart. Lord, the grace to begin to take radical actions of obedience towards my destiny. Radical actions of obedience. As proof that I believe your grace and as proof that I am maximizing that grace. Please go ahead and pray. Radical actions of obedience. Obedience in study. Obedience in mentorship. Obedience in prayer. Obedience in speaking. Finding out the conditions that my results depend on and working in keeping with those conditions. Please pray. There is a grace for speed. There is a grace for performance. There is a grace for influence and visibility. There is a grace for signs and wonders. There is a grace for leadership. There is a grace for wealth and abundance. Believe me. There is a grace for favor. These graces are available. But even if they come upon your life, they don't produce results automatically. They enable you to do. They enable you to act. They enable you to act. They empower you. Please pray. Hallelujah. Last prayer point tonight. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Mighty God, someone's life is changing. 2 Corinthians, help us, media. 2 Corinthians chapter 9 and verse 8. Please read with me, believers. One, two, read. And God is able to to make stop God has an ability he can coordinate the grace for favor join it with the grace for wisdom join it with the grace for speed the grace for restoration bringing grace is not your assignment God is able to make all grace abound towards you 
And now when you partner with that grace through diligence and obedience, you will always having all sufficiency in how many things? By these results, you will abound to every good work. God supplies the grace. You take advantage of the grace through faith. And now that grace empowers you, empowers your mind, your body, your spirit, your will, and pushes you to walk in keeping with the conditions that make for the promise, the condition that makes for the results that you seek. And inevitably, the Bible says, if you live like this, you will say, are you ready to pray? Father, every grace that I need in this season, every dimension of grace, and if you know a particular dimension of grace that you are seeking passionately, lift your voice and pray. The Bible says it comes from God. God is able to make all grace abound towards you. The grace for prosperity, the grace for passion and hunger for the things of God. The grace for prayer and supplication, the grace for revelation, the grace for influence, the grace for signs and wonders, the grace for favor, attracting to your life helpers of destiny. All of these graces are for your taking but you must pray that God sends them and pray that you will maximize them Lord I will not waste your grace through ignorance I will not waste your grace through idleness I will not waste your grace through carelessness I release my faith and I take advantage of that grace hallelujah praise the name of the Lord before I speak over your life for tonight I want to invite very quickly I've, I've preached about grace there are people here scattered within this auditorium please no movement let's respect the altar call those outside all the overflows down to the basement and there are people following from nations continents territories you have heard the word the grace that saves right now is within reach but it will only profit you if you are able to take that step and stand as one who is in need of that grace the bible says whosoever comes to him he will in no wise cast away i'm going to make an altar call for two groups of people very quickly number one those who are saying apostle i've given up I'm, I'm tired of living my life my own way. I want Jesus. I need him desperately. And number two, there are those who are saying, I want restoration. I want to rededicate my life. If you are here, I'm going to count one to three because of our time. Please boldly, unashamedly, I'd like you to leave your seat and come and stand here. Remember that the grace is only activated when we take those steps of faith. An instruction has been given by the Spirit. Celebrate them as they come. I begin to count now. One. Two. Come to Jesus. The saving grace is working in your life. No matter how far you have gone, he can give you a new beginning. Come. Come to Jesus. Koinonia, celebrate them as they come. This is the grace of God. This is what the grace of God can do when we participate with that grace. All those at the overflows, just move to your projector screens. Following online, be ready to make that prayer. Are you still clapping? Watch what the grace of God can do. For as long as they are seated, it will look like grace is not working. But when you begin to take action, then you see the grace work. Now I'm forever grateful that you have been faithful to me, God, for your amazing grace. I salute every one of you, my dear brothers and sisters, 
for making this noble decision just like I thought you have partnered with God's grace now you have done your own part by coming there's only one more step left the prayer of salvation to repeat after me then the giver of grace will bring you away his life and that life becomes yours at the instance of your faith demonstrated in and through your coming and your confession some of you are crying don't be afraid and don't be ashamed this is a family of faith we are recipients of God's grace are you ready to pray please lift your right hand before Jesus whose office grace is administered in this kingdom we never partake of grace outside of the office of the Christ he is the epicenter of grace I once was lost but now I'm found I was blind but now everyone here in front of me and those at the overflows the basement outside following online please repeat after me very loud and let it be from the depth of your heart knowing that Jesus is here and he's listening to you the grace that saves has brought you and is ready to administer salvation say Lord Jesus one more time say Lord Jesus I believe in your word I believe in your grace tonight I have heard that your grace can save so I come to you just as I am I ask you to forgive my sins I ask you tonight to be my Savior my Lord and my King I declare that I am a recipient of eternal life. I declare that I receive the abundance of grace and the gift of righteousness. I declare that my sins are forgiven. The power of sin, Satan, hell, and the grave is broken from my life. From today, I go forward ever and backward never. Amen and hallelujah. Keep your hands lifted. Father, the Bible declares that whoever will come to him, you will in no wise cast away. These ones have come. I pray by the authority of scripture, I declare that your sins are forgiven. From today, even by the authority of scripture, it says, therefore, if any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. All things have gone. Behold, all things become new. I declare that you start afresh with the Lord from today. I declare that the power of Satan, sin, hell, and the grave is broken from your life. You are members of the fold of faith, blood washed, recipients of eternal life i commend you to the ministry of the word and the ministry of the spirit that in the name of jesus by the twofold ministry of the word and the spirit you will grow in grace in the name of jesus christ from tonight you are victorious you go forward ever and backward never in jesus name i pray amen and amen Thank you and a big congratulations to all of you. Thank you. Now, I want you to follow the counselors. They are waving their hands and waving a placard. Please, all of you in concert, just follow them for a minute or two. They'll just appraise you on a few things, have your details, and you'll be back to your seat. Koinonia, are you celebrating salvation? <laughs> Hallelujah. Now, whilst they are outside, I want to speak over your life. Now that you know what to do with grace, it is now profitable to speak those dimensions of graces as a priestly blessing over your life. So that when you receive it, you know how to run with it. 
in the name that is above all names i declare every grace that you have seen at work in this house and you desire to walk in your life i declare over you may that grace come upon you now receive the grace for extraordinary wisdom the grace for revelation the grace for influence and visibility the grace for prayer the grace for passion and encounters with god dearly beloved i hope you were blessed by this message i want you to keep doing something for this man of god our man of god apostle joshua salman and that is, I want you to keep on praying for him that the cause of the gospel may have free flow in him, that he may be granted boldness to continue with his commission of Jesus Christ and that all provisions be given unto him as he continues in this journey of Christianity. And then don't forget to like this video. Don't forget to hit the subscribe button if you are new here. Don't also forget to leave a comment in the comment section and then keep sharing. Keep sharing abroad and let's all keep sharing Jesus. I'll see you again. Bye.